Hi, this is Nina. Welcome to NV Fine Art Studio. Today I want to talk about the brushwork. This is one of the most ignored problems that leads to very obvious mistakes in your painting. If you ask me how to know if the brushwork is wrong, I'd say have a look at your painting and think. Does your painting look overworked? Does your painting look muddy? Does your painting look too tight? If any of this is true, it means your brushwork needs improvement. In this video I want to show some simple examples of what to do and what to avoid if you want to loosen up your work. The first step in the right direction would be to have authority in your brushwork. And please note, it has nothing to do with your own personality. It just means that when you make your mark on the paper, it has to be quick, decisive and confident. The opposite to this would be dabbing, fidgeting and making too slow and too careful marks. Let me show you a few examples of a confident versus careful brush mark. To do a good brush stroke, you need to hold your brush above the metal holder with a relaxed grip. Put your brush on the paper and move it quickly. Try to cover as much ground as possible in one stroke. Don't worry if the line is not perfect and there are skipped white bits. You more than often need them for a good looking wash. If you look at my poor example, I hold the brush very close to the bristles, which is wrong, and do many very small careful marks. I'm trying to fill the area and being more concerned about the perfecting the shape rather than freshness of the wash. The result is very uneven surface and stiff looking shape. This is just an example of a line. Down below I have examples of a square, rectangular, circle, dome and a house with a shadow. On the left hand side where my good examples are, I'm trying to minimize the brush strokes. If I can do it in one go, for example a circle, I would definitely do it. Here is an example of a dome roof. It's hard to do it in one go, but as long as the top part is done, the bottom can be added as a second stroke. Don't forget, making a first quick and confident brush mark doesn't stop you from making a few little adjustments to the shape later on. For example, I added a few little details to the dome and toned down its tonal value. In the instance of the house, I did opposite. I lightened up the tonal value of the wall and the shadow. You can always perfect things later on, such as corners, top or bottom line, add water or do a washout. It's just having this first initial good mark can never be substituted by a dabbed shape. The next point is to use an appropriate brush technique for its purpose. For example, when we do our first wash, move your brush quickly on the surface. Quick marks will leave a few wet areas blank and you thank yourself later for this. Always have an excuse to have white of the paper present in your painting. But make it casual, don't do perfect squares as I did on the right hand side. When you're done with your first wash, think about what is next. If it's windows, for example, do I paint it as a dry brush mark, as a solid mark or wet into wet? If you paint sunny side, try dry brush marks and limit your hard edged marks. On the right hand side there is a wrong example. I would at all cost avoid doing rows of perfect rectangulars with crease cross inside. The power is in simplification and suggestion. This painting is not about a house that has four rows of 20 windows and a door. I'm sure this is not the story you want your painting to tell. If you're painting an object in shadow, such as a window, paint wet on wet. It would be wrong to paint the dark side of the building, wait for it to dry and paint over very carefully every window, every detail. We don't usually see a lot of detail in the dark and to suggest this we need to simplify even more. So wet on wet is perfect tool for this. The next point is to remember that your brush is a continuation of your hand. I'm going to paint a tree. 
First, I give a good example and next a poor one. I start with an indication of a sky. Just a bit of cool, gray, very light wash. Please note how I hold my brush and how quickly I move. Also, please note the randomness of the marks. All of this helps to suggest and be loose. Next, I do the foliage. Again, my moves are quick and intentional, but most importantly, look carefully how I move the brush and where the motion starts. Quite often, I actually twist and turn my wrist to move the brush, particularly if I paint organic objects, such as tree foliage and tree branches. You need to be flexible and fluid with your movement. The way you move your brush on the paper leaves a particular brush mark. The way you move your hand up and down, the way you twist your brush is very important. You cannot repeat these marks if you just do rigid and jerky movements. The opposite to this would be painting like doing a handwriting for your assignment. Look what the difference it makes holding the brush very closely to the point. It restricts your movement and you are forced to do lots of repetitive strokes, exactly like writing. The foliage actually looks like a row of letters O. Of course, if I try my best, I will achieve the similar result to my first example. But why complicate watercolor painting even more than it is? When I finished with the foliage, I move on to the tree trunk and the branches. Again, it would be wrong to carefully dab in your shapes with lots of restricted movements. This tree does look like a tree, but it looks more like a coloring book tree rather than a living and breathing organism that is a part of a bigger environment. Here are the two examples side by side. Just a reminder that this tutorial is about brushwork and not about how to paint a tree. I'm sure that the right hand side tree would be pleasing for some, but from a professional point of view and if you're after a fresh, loose style, the left hand side technique is the way to go. The last but not least, the size of the brushes. Don't be afraid of big brushes. It is much easier and quicker to paint a big shape with a big brush. If you do your first wash that covers pretty much the entire paper or a light shadow, definitely use a big brush. If you worry about spoiling the shape, please don't. This is where your failure begins. You can get away with pretty much anything if you paint with big authoritative brush marks. But also, don't paint the whole painting with a huge brush. Every shape needs a proper size brush. If you do public lights or electricity wires, you definitely need a good rigger or a script brush. If you paint people or cars, you may need a medium synthetic brush with a good point. In other words, big brushes for big brush marks, medium for medium and small for small. This will definitely help you with achieving cleaner and fresher washes. This is it for today. Hope you learned something new. If you like this video, please subscribe, like and share. This will definitely help my channel to grow and deliver more great content to you. 
Thank you for watching. See you in my next video.